with Mick the Beard from Metal Gods TV, and I'm with Lips from the Mighty Anvil. Good day, eh? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, you guys, well, you go way, way, way back. I mean, I remember seeing you, God, it must be 86 at the Metal on Metal Tour. Is it 86? Uh, yeah, when, when, during the Motorhead Tour in yeah. 83. 83, yeah. 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 I'm getting older than I think. <laughs> and uh, you seem to be, that seemed to be the album that everybody's saying, yes, Anvil are going to go. And then all of a sudden, well, that's when everything got derailed. Yeah. You know, we, we lost manage, our management, record company, everything, everybody went away that, that you need in order to really make, to, to make it. Yeah. You take away that, you're on your own, man. How are you going to make it? That's right. You know, without management, you're, you're, you're up shit's yeah. creek without a paddle. Basically, it's it's no doubt about that. I mean, you haven't got representation. How are you going to get a proper record deal? How are you going to get tours? How you you know, you're you're screwed, man. You haven't got a chance. And if we proved anything in all the years, is that 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 is really true. <laughs> you know. I mean, that, people will probably find it hard to believe. I mean, there's posters around with Anvil and Metallica supporting. I mean, and now it's sort of up there. You know. It's, uh, you know, we came before Metallica, but it doesn't mean that you're going to make it nope, that's right. before, you know, you know, there's, there's, there's no justice really, no. you know, justice did get served eventually, but we had to stick it out in order for it to, you know, in order for it to come true. And it's interesting because, you know, I can remember in, it was, must have been uh, 90, 1991 when Metallica, I guess, had done the uh, Black Album. And they went out on tour with Aerosmith, I believe. And when they came to town, of course, Ross Helfen was hanging out with them and, and so forth. And we ended, ended up at the gig. And Jason Newstead, first thing he said to me, he goes, Lips, you're 20 years ahead of your time. Keep your band together, stick it out, and the world will catch up to you, and you guys will make it after all. You know, I mean, that, it's just interesting that yeah. these are the these are the kind of things that um, you know the, 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 these big bands they all extended their their hospitality to us and have always expressed uh, really positive stuff to us yeah. all through the years. I mean, all the all the major bands and. That's part of the part of the equation to why we just never gave up. We knew we were. We knew that we meant something. And when you know that you mean something, and it, 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 it we made a difference. There's nowhere to run. You got to stick at it, and eventually, eventually, with the right. Me, we had to wait for the next time to be at the right place at the right time, because that's what being making it in the music industry is all about: is being at the right place at the right time. And the words of wisdom coming from Lemmy in his interview in the movie couldn't have been more more correct. You know, and and some of the discussion that he had off camera with with the director had Anvil moved to the United States in 1983 instead of sitting around in Canada when things dissipated things may have turned out a lot differently but because we sat and waited it passed us by you know so between 1983 and 90, 1987 we weren't putting out records most important years in heavy metal yeah. that's the worst thing that we could have done but it's not like anybody was coming looking for us you have to go make yourself see God, about you got to go after it. You got to be hungry. You got to, you got to chase your dream, and go after it with a vengeance. Now, having learnt all that, you know, and been through all those things, and we kept the band together and always remained ready. See, that's what it, that's the big key element is always being ready because. We knew in eventuality something or somebody or somewhere along the line, it's going to change. It's got to. But we've got to be ready at all points from here on in. 
now once of course things dissipated and the stuff happened of course the two two other members that were with us originally they couldn't they couldn't weather it yeah. they weren't like rob and i well you and rob were sort of like brothers really aren't you? yeah well we've we've been playing together since 1973 so whether it's with those two guys or another two guys or just another guy it was not relevant to us we're where we were writing all the music i'm the lead guitarist lead vocalist it doesn't matter you know i've got my buddy man who is the most solid and most intense drummer in the world. I'm not leaving. He's he looks at me as being a great, a great at what I do. There's no reason to break it up. There's nothing to run from. No matter what we do, we'll always be the two original members of Anvil, even if we go play for someone else. So where are you going? Yeah. You might as well just remain in Anvil. And make it make Anvil work, right? And you've got pretty understanding wives as well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know it's. Uh, you know, in my in my view, after of course things fell through in the early '80s like that, I just figured, well, what I'm going to have to do, and we're not a commercial commodity, it's going to be a hard road, but I'm willing to do it. I'm going to be underground. I'll stay underground, and I'm, I'm content with it. I never have to live up to being a radio pop band. I'll just create music from the heart, and do it the way I want to do it, how I want to do it, and when I want to do it. And that's what we did. And my philosophy was, eventually, one of our fans is going to grow up and own a record company and sign us. I mean, that, that's, yeah. that was my train of thought, honestly. Truthfully, it's, it's just as you see me sitting here, that was what I figured was going to happen. As it turned out, that we led into the change room of the Marquee Club in London. 1982 grew up to be Steven Spielberg's screenwriter. <laughs> so never going to to be to really get it you're not going to get the distribution you haven't got the management you haven't got the proper record deals you, we were always on independent independent labels particularly out of germany with minimal i mean the most that they could do was get the records out but as far as a promotional campaign and even the distribution that they're going to get, you know, if they're going to send out an order of CDs to to the UK, they're going to send out a couple hundred. It's not like you're going to be lucky to find one. What working on that level, you're just not. It's just that's what comes with it. Now, having said that, I was content. Understand? I'm content. I'm, I'm getting to do. I got, I got. I got. I got to have my cake and eat it too in many, many different ways. First of all, by not being 100% full-time, going after it, band. It meant I was at home. Yeah. I built a family. I got married. I own a house. I, these are all things that normal people. That had I been a full-time musician and never never gone and worked like as a delivery guy I would never money to ever have had to have acquired anything and, you, and how do you become attractive
seeing me for 20, 30 years, tells me my story is up and he wants to make a move. misses me I certainly miss him and my wife you know but the other side of it is that you know the opportunities that that this has created for me is is opportunity for my family as well in, in the long run and I won't be left you know sleeping on the street when I can't work anymore you know what I mean yeah. I'm not, I, I was able to get out of that sort of dead end job that was I was never going to be able to retire really I mean the truth and honesty I probably would have worked till I was 70 years old doing deliveries you know well, you'd probably be on the stage now with your guitar 70 years old and, and I'm now re retired yeah but I'm retired into doing what I love and which isn't really work I, well, love I, well, I remember I seeing your that. face See, that's a thing, you know. It's not like um, it's not like in any other band. There's a warmth. People know what I'm feeling. That's what you felt. Because yeah. you know what it. You don't know what it means to other music. Some of their friends, you know, that really got an insight into who I am as a, as a human being, and that's extraordinarily powerful, extraordinary. And what? Well, I, what's happened is, is um, along along with the, the Anvil movie, and partially because of the Anvil movie, the, the whole resurgence. For this type of music, although the Anvil movies, it, it, it had such an incredible, uh, incredible diversity of, of of people watching it, the demographics are just yeah. out of the ballpark, yeah. you know. So, uh, what, what's been happening, and he, uh, particularly here in, in in England, is many people are showing up and they've never been to a metal show in their life. And I'm not just talking about kids, I'm talking about elderly people. Because they saw the movie, and the movie, the way the movie is, is the metal aspect is a backdrop. Yeah. It's not in the forefront. It's about the people. 
It's a, it's a people story. It's a human story. It's about the human spirit, and that touches everybody. It's not. It's not. It's not just confined to that small genre of music. And it's drawing those people to come see their first metal show ever. Well, the warmth of the band comes across, but also you're getting like a spinal tap cult status as well. You know, it's, it's sort of people are comparing it with that as well. Well, that's an intentional thing. There's no way around being compared to spinal tap because you just, no matter what you do, you're yeah. going to be. So instead of, instead of trying to avoid it, we embraced it. We embraced it in such a way that you can laugh at yourself. And there are things that are very comical about it. And there's no doubt about that. But having said that, there's some very, very tragic stuff that also goes with it. Life is filled with balances. And by using the, the spinal tap sort of It gave a people, people a starting point. But it worked as a Trojan horse. Yes, here's the Trojan horse, it's beautiful. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, it's filled with the army, right? In this particular case, they come to expecting a full on spoof comedy. And before they know it, they got tears running down their face and they're going, my God. You know, it's, and with the balance, the balance this and this between comedy and you wouldn't the tragedy. I must admit, I said to the young band, I say to them, watch that. Or true well, to life to what happens, people who are coming well, up the ladder. Know, you know, I think it, I think it, it says it all when there's a f there's you know a concert series called the big four yeah that says it all doesn't it yeah what about the rest that's right there's only four big bands <laughs> do you know how many thousands of bands there are how many thousands of anvils there are <laughs> well that's, I mean, it. I mean, that's what it that's what the metal genre is it's it's by far way more populated with underground than it is of anything else. If there's only four ba big bands, the rest is underground, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not glamorous. It really isn't. Even the big bands, you know, the big get the worst of the worst situations arise of it. Yeah. Right. And the worst, the worst and deeper, deeper problems that people. that arise of it. Like, believe me. You know, when, it, when, it, when, when you have a marital problem and you're a mega millionaire rock star, you got a big problem, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> I mean, it, everything is compounded. You know, Metallica, I, I, I actually read some stuff that, where they were talking about, you think that, you know, Anvil's had it tough. You know, we get in the airplane, we find out we flew to the and we're gonna be late for our show. <laughs> So it, it's very common. It comes with it. You know, the, the stupidity and all the crazy shit comes with this living, this life. That's what it is. I mean, that's, that's the, the, the real truth. What you're seeing here, it's not like there's second takes. I got my hand around that guy's paying us. It's not like the could you do that again? <laughs> you know, these are all one takes, you know. You, you, we got very lucky. It will never, what got filmed will never happen again. You can't live it twice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything that happened is all by chance. You know, it's not, it's not like he wrote, the guy wrote a script and we're going to follow, follow what's going to happen. It just unraveled itself in that way. That's why it won't get repeated. No one's going to be able to make a movie like that again. It's a one one time deal. Never mind the fact that of how it came to be the story within the story that it was this 15 year old fan. You know, people right away condemned us in a certain sense. You're making it because of a movie. 
well, hold on a second. There would be no movie if there was no fan of the band. So wait a second, okay, now you made it because of a movie, let's see what you can do musically. Well, guess what? Juggernaut of Justice. Too hot. Right? We're gonna stand up and kick out that and we're gonna show you, the world, that we got screwed and derailed by the music business. That doesn't mean we suck. That has nothing to do with it. Our abilities or our, or, or, our integrity has absolutely nothing to do with it. If we've proved anything, you, like I said at the onset, you can't do it alone. You need a manager. You need representation. You need a producer. You can't produce yourself. It's not really possible. You can never get the objective perspective that you need to produce your own records. You can't. That's what you would advise to new bands to try and get some produce, some production yeah, on their things. It, it, it's it's a conundrum because the producer, you've made a name for yourself. So it's, you know, look at they had to make a, a full on movie before I got a manager. Yeah. You know, I basically had to make it, to make it. Yeah. You know, so. My advice, my only advice, I think at this point to anybody trying to get anywhere, it's all about identity. Create an identity. Be and create something that only you can and no one else can, and then you got a fighting chance. I mean, that's, that's really the bottom line. If you haven't got, if you haven't got an identity, you're going nowhere. Great advice to you all out there. Call it a day.